done with shoe number one. I'm on my way to shoe number two. After I stopped and put some air in my tire. Man, what I realized is, dog, I gotta get my time management under control, boy. I know we started this shoe kinda late, but I gotta do that, because there was other stuff I needed to do before I did my second shoe. But it's whatever. I mean, you gotta roll with the punches. But I'm about to go put air in my tire and head to shoot number two to finish up the shoot that y'all saw in my last vlog when we was on top of the garage and they was dancing and stuff. So, yeah, so I'm gonna go finish that up. Time management. Y'all gotta keep that in mind. No matter what you do, time cannot be wasted. It just can't be. Um, so, yeah, time management. It's very important, if not one of the most important things that people need to stay mindful of is being mindful of the time they spend and where they spend it at. Because uh, even the most productive person can fall short if he don't manage his time correctly. Uh, that's always been an issue of mine since day one. I'm the type of person where I put all my energy into one thing and then I pass all the other responsibilities off to somebody else that's either more equipped to handle it or that can save me time from having to do it. That's why I like HoneyBook. HoneyBook ain't a sponsor, but y'all go get HoneyBook. Uh, it helps out with my career a lot. Uh, yeah, it messages people for me, all that good stuff. It saves me a lot of time. Time management is important if you want to run a successful business. If you want to uh, have a steady life, if you want to balance work and family, if you want to balance family and friends, if you want to balance hobbies and other hobbies, and no matter what you're doing, like time management is one of the most, if not the most key things you need to take into consideration. But anyway, like I said, I'm about to head to my next shoot after I put air in the tire. So I'll see y'all in the sick. So this vlog is going to be about how did I know being a filmmaker, a director, a videographer is what I wanted to do in my life. So I got this question from Instagram. If you don't already follow me on Instagram at Spidey Weber, uh, I had put up a tab asking my followers to ask me questions. So the fo this follower asked me a question. So shout out to you just for you. So how did I know I want to be a filmmaker? So I talked about my origin story about my origin of being a filmmaker and, and whatnot and how I got into it. One of the times I realized, it was a few times I realized, it's not just one time, it was a few times I realized when this was something I really wanted to do. Uh, it was a few stepping stones in my life where it, it, it was one time it, it, it was one time in particular it confirmed it and then other times in my life that continued to confirm it. Um, but the first time was when I got paid for my first music video. Uh, a random guy I do not know found me on Instagram. I think it was Instagram. It was a long time ago. And he reached out to me, and I went to this hotel. I bought my lights. Shout out to my homeboy Gabriel. My homeboy G-Man was with me, and uh, he had helped me take myself because I didn't know the dude, so I didn't want to go by myself. But he went with me, and we uh, he helped me, like, Bring me bring my lights in and, and stuff like that. Kind of was like my PA. So uh, before I even knew what a PA was. But anyway, uh, you know, I shot the video. I put some of the, the clips 
while I'm talking. I shot the video, all that good stuff, and um, man, it turned out well. Uh, the video turned out pretty good. Uh, we stayed out kind of late. I got home, I ate it, and I got my first, I think it was $200. And at that moment, I was like, bro, I could really get paid to, to make videos with people. Like, but I can really make some money off this. And at the time, I didn't make a whole lot of money. So $200, and I wasn't at work. It was a lot of money. Because, you know, on average, the average person makes, on average, makes maybe a little over $100 uh, a day. So I made $200 that night, and I felt like, man, I'm making some money. I, I ain't had to go to work to clock in to do this. And from there, I was like, man, this is what I wanted to do. But... Enough of all that. I'm about to go make some money right now and shoot this next video. And I'll get into the next milestone that reconfirmed what I, why I wanted to shoot videos. Or why I confirmed that this is what I wanted to do in my life. Stay tuned. <music> What's up, y'all? So I made. What's up, y'all? So I just made it back home from the shoot. I'm tired, man. It is midnight. I started. I left. The, I left the crib at 11. It is now midnight. I've been out for 12 hours, shooting 12 hours. I just got me some Taco Bell on my way home because I was hungry. All I ate was some kolaches on my way up here. Anyway. Well, on my way up here, but on my way to the shoot. Anyway, the shoot was good. Y'all saw it. it was dope. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. Tobey going to do his thing with it. He's going to edit it. He directed it, so he's going to put it all together. But it was fun working with him. And hopefully we can work together in the future. But <clears throat> with all that being said, let me go into my number two reason. When I went to Africa. So... I've told y'all before that I, I went to Africa uh, for video work. Well, someone found me on Instagram. Uh, shout out to Alex. Somebody found out, found me on Instagram to uh, to shoot the, shoot her wedding. And <clears throat> so, at the time when I went to Africa, I think it was in 2019. Somebody found me on Instagram. Shout out to Alex, and uh, that it was her. But uh, <laughs> anyway, she found me on Instagram and reached out to me to want to come to Africa to shoot her wedding. I'm going to be honest. I've never prior to this, I've never flown out of the state to shoot anything. I, I haven't. So I was kind of in disbelief. And it wasn't for me to go to Africa. I take that back. It was for me to do the engagement video in different cities. And then it ended up going to Africa afterwards. But pretty much she hit me up. DM me. I didn't believe her. Um, I thought this was a scam or something because I've never had nobody really hit me up. And she wanted me to go to three different cities, like back to back to back. I'm like, how did she going for all this? Find out it was for real. End up going. And what's crazy about that, before I, I go too far into it, what's crazy about that is I turned it down at the beginning. Not because I didn't think it was real because I ended up finding out it was real, but I said I had to turn it down. Because I had a Kinsieta to do that same weekend she wanted me to fly out. So, I turned it down. And what happened was, a few days later, she came back and she DM'd me. And she ended up moving the dates around so I can do it. And at that moment, I realized that this opportunity was meant for me. Like, she could have just found somebody else. In fact, not only could she have found somebody else, I reached, I gave her a recommendation to two other people. And one of them didn't respond, and the other one ended up not being able to do it. And it, it came back to me. And I'm a firm believer in what's meant for you is meant for you. At the end of the day, it is what it is. If it's meant for you, it's meant for you. And 
I turned it down and it found its way back. And I knew that opportunity was for me. So after doing all of that and then also going to Africa, uh, I was in disbelief that my talents and my skill took me to another country and I didn't have to pay for nothing. And it was a blessing that I was able to do something that, like I said, none of my family members might have, might not none, but a lot of my family members not going to get the chance to be able to do. And me able to, and for me to be able to do that at 25, I'm not 25 no more, but at the, at the time 25, um, I was able to do that. And now I got to see the motherland all because I was off my talent. That's another one of the times where I was reinsured that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I was doing it for a wedding. And a lot of times, even wedding videographers don't get that opportunity. And I still did. And I don't even primarily do weddings. So it just let me know that some opportunities are meant for you. They just are. So that's that's the second one. Uh, and I'll hit y'all with a third one when I can remember what it is. <laughs> Anyway, I'll catch y'all tomorrow or the next time after the, to the next clip, whether that's tomorrow or whenever. What's up, y'all? So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a sit-down at my crib. I didn't have time uh, with Christmas here and gifts and wrapping and videos and all. What not? Everything you saw in the vlog. I just didn't have time to... Actually, I did, but I was tired with working. Everything put together. I just didn't have the energy to sit down and do that. So, I'm going to do that now. What's up? Did you want to say hey to the camera? And just go ahead and do this while I have some time. So, uh, to finish it off, like I said, one of the main reasons why I got into like I was supposed to do this for sure was that whole Africa thing. Like that was just something that was beyond that I saw in my foresight of my life. And be, me being able to do that really gave me the courage and the knowledge to know that this is something I really want to do in my life. And outside of that, uh just the affirmation from others of them saying they love my work a lot of that but i want to say the third reason and this, and this third reason wasn't too long ago and uh, i want to say maybe about a year ago i shot it but not too long ago i had a video premiered on bet bt jams i'm sorry i had a video premiered on v bet jams and as a kid when i was in high school uh i used to watch bet jams in the morning before i go to school all that type of stuff like bet jams as a kid you know you you, you watch all the music videos and stuff on there and to know that my name and my logo and my company was uh, premiered on that platform is just a bit mind-boggling. And though it's not super hard to do that if you got the right connections, and me personally, I didn't have the connections, but the artists I worked with did. But just knowing that I worked my way up to a point to where that was even something that happened to me is uh, beyond what I thought in my foresight as well. I just didn't see that in my future. So me having a video premiere on BET Jams kind of like validated that man Jarvis like, look, you on TV, like at Spidey Weber as seen on TV. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's an amazing feeling. And uh, I, I just, I was amazed at that. Uh, shout out to Kat for that, uh, for that opportunity. And, um, man, it was, it was just a blessing. Uh, bro, why are you licking my steering wheel? Why, why, why are you licking my steering wheel, Benji? Benji. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. so that was one of the main reasons, uh, those three were the main reasons why I were validated and gave me the courage to know that this is what I really want to do in my life. Now, obviously, the every, uh, the, the consistent affirmation that I get from people that validates that as well, you know what I'm saying? So, 
people that hit me up on Instagram, people that tell me, man, I, I'm inspired by you, I love your work, things like that really get me going and get me excited about what I'm really doing. So, well, he got scared because the dogs was uh, barking. So my recommendation for anybody that's watching this that's curious to want to find out if what they doing or what their hobby is or what their talent is is what they want to pursue and do for the rest of their life, what I would recommend is it's something that I saw in the book. And it's pretty much saying whatever your talent is, whatever your hobby is, if you're willing to do that for free, then you're on the right track. Uh, you obvious, Obviously, y'all heard the saying that uh, do what you love, you'll never work another day in your life. And to a degree, that's very true. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, lot of, it's a whole lot of truth in that. But for sure, if you're willing to do whatever you, that you're doing and you will, will willingly, if, you, if money wasn't involved and uh, you could just rely on just doing that, if you didn't have to worry about money at all and you could just do that for the rest of your life and everything else is taken care of, would you do that? And if that answer is yes, then you're in the right direction. That's one of the main reasons, right? Because uh, don't get me wrong, I love film and I love videography, but I don't love all forms of videography. I, uh, mostly music videos and creative stuff, creative projects, uh, even short films, even though I don't have the patience for it. But, you know, cinematography, music videos, things like that, I love it, right? So, uh, And I would be willing to do that for free, right? So... I will also recommend that to the person that's watching this, the person that asked me the question, all that. If you find something in your life that you're willing to do for free, then that's you heading in the right direction. Also, to just experiment with stuff. Uh, life ain't no straightforward course. Life ain't no straightforward uh, road. You're going to have twists and turns all over the place. But you got to find, you got to find something you're interested in, pursue that. And it might lead you into something that you're really interested in. Like, I was a dancer. Me being a dancer, I, somebody had to put our YouTube videos up. And with me doing that, at some point, somebody had to put our YouTube videos on YouTube. So I learned how to edit. I learned how to shoot videos. for uh, Or learn how to shoot our videos so I could edit them and put them on YouTube. And then it pursued as life progressed. Then it turned into videography and filmmaking. When I realized I was really good at it. And something that I really wanted to pursue in. So, yeah, I would recommend that. Just find something that you really like to do. Whether it's something you really like or something that you just, you somewhat like. And eventually it'll form into something. Every, every, we all have our things in life where we like, we play with things and, uh, we, we tend to jump into different hoops with different stuff and then kind of like reform how we do things. That's how music and creativity is made. People take things that they've seen before. People take things that they tried and like, all right, I tried it this way. Let me put my own little tweak in it. And then they find their lane or they find their hobby or they find their talent because they took something that either was already established, something they had a little passion for, and then found their passion like, instance i love podcasting and i didn't know i liked that until i tried it one time in different ways and different forms and i found out what way in podcasting that i love to do like actually to be honest i i would i enjoy podcasting just as much as i enjoy making music videos like i run, i love to run my mouth i do it better when i'm having conversations compared compared to just recording straight to the camera but at the end of the day it's podcasting nonetheless right so uh I recommend that. Find something you want to do, get into that, and then add your own little tweak to it. Before you know it, you into something that you really love doing. Eight years it came by, and you done uh, blew everybody's mind away on how far you done came. Don't you think about jumping out the window. Of course you're not, but stop. Don't do that. Anyway, um, yeah. So, with that being said, I'm going to holler at y'all when we there. Peace.